And I had no idea that so much effort was being expended on my behalf. Um, and now having found out, I am just overwhelmed with emotion. Freed American journalist Peter Theo Curtis expressing thanks and surprise at the efforts to bring him home. Hello, everyone. Great to see you today. I'm John Berman. And I'm Michaela Pereira. Those stories and much more ahead at this hour. We're going to begin with freed American journalist Peter Theo Curtis spending his first morning in the United States after almost two years mm. in captivity in Syria, and he is already speaking Pretty out. Pretty extraordinary. We just right. heard from him last hour from his mother's home uh, in Cambridge, Massachusetts. He uh, got right to expressing thanks for being uh, brought home, the effort that went into bringing him home. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. First of all, I want to thank you all for coming out here on this beautiful Wednesday morning. Um, uh, in the days following my release on Sunday, I have learned bit by bit uh, that there have been literally hundreds of people, brave, determined, and big-hearted people all over the world working for my release. They've been working for two years on this. Um, uh, I, I had no idea when I was in prison. I had no idea that so much effort was being expended on my behalf. Um, and now having found out, I am just overwhelmed with emotion. I'm also overwhelmed by one other thing, and that is that total strangers have been coming up to me and saying, hey, we're just glad you're home. Welcome home. Glad you're back. Glad you're safe. Um, great to see you. So I suddenly remember how good the American people are and what kindness they have in their hearts. And to all those people, I say a huge thank you from my heart, from the bottom of my heart. Uh, and now, uh, look, I, I'm so grateful that you are expressing all this interest in me. <laughs> At the same time, I have to bond with my mother and my family now, and, uh, and I can't give you an interview, and I can't give you uh, a, a, a talk back and forth. Can you tell us what it feels like? And I, that's all I can say to you, but in the future, I promise I will respond to your emails, and I will be present, and I will help you guys do your job, and I'm one of you, and I know what you guys are going through, so I want to uh, help you guys, and I will be there, and I will respond, but I can't do it now. Thanks, and off he went back into his home to bond with his family and spend some time with them. A short, a direct, and very touching moment there. Miguel Marquez is outside the Curtis home in Cambridge, Massachusetts, where all of that just happened. And we're also joined by psychiatrist Harry Croft. He's a former Army doctor. Miguel, we got to talk about that. He is a sight for sore eyes. What a moment to hear from him. He clearly uh, looks tired, but extraordinarily relieved uh, and very, very emotional. I mean, he was really fighting back tears and the emotions as he was talking. I mean, think of it, 22 months basically kept literally in the dark for much, much of it. And then to have the entire world sort of focused on you like this, not even knowing during all this time whether or not anybody cared at all or even knew. And indeed, his family didn't know for about uh, half the time he was in captivity, where he was, whether he had just disappeared, been killed, or was in captivity. So uh, he is extraordinarily uh, thankful uh, that he is home. Um, his mother, I'm sure, is going to make him a darned good meal. And he, he clearly wants to get more off of his chest. Uh, but you know, just looking at him today, dressed in a T-shirt and jeans and sandals and looking relaxed compared to the videos where he was high strung and clearly under stress, a gun pointed to his head in one of those videos, um, clearly a different man today and extraordinarily uh, thankful and happy to be home. Okay, look. I got to say, you know, what a mensch also, looking at all the reporters, all of you out there saying, I know there's a lot of interest in here, but I got to bond with mom, <laughs> like the ultimate mensch. Miguel, the, the context of all this happening right now, you know, just a few minutes ago, we, we, we played really a heart-wrenching video from the mother of Stephen Sotloff, who is in custody right now in Syria. Last week, James Foley was assassinated in Syria. I know this is really difficult, uh, you know, for the, for the Curtis family. This is the tough thing, and uh, you've been to some of these places, uh, John. Uh, uh, Jim Foley, uh, James Foley, his parents, uh, Diane and John Foley, they became friends with the Curtises while their kids uh, were locked up in captivity. They bonded, they held together, hoping that they could all have this day. Uh, it did not happen for the Foley family. When, uh, when Mrs. Curtis found out that her son was free, that he was standing right next to the 
to the, uh, the the officer from the State Department, from the U.S. State Department. The first thing she did was picked up the, the phone and called Mrs. Foley, James Foley's mother, who had just gotten the news the week before that her son had been killed in a very brutal way. Uh, a very, very hard thing to take. Yeah. Uh, a, a real sense of the bittersweetness here today. Back to you guys. As low as we got last year, or last week, rather, learning of James Foley's assassination, as you said, we got just as high to see him uh, home with his family. Dr. Croft, Army, former Army doctor and a psychiatrist, you can speak to uh, his, his health right now in terms of the trauma that he has been through for the last two years, the captivity, potentially the torture, uh, being away from loved ones, being cut off from outside world. Uh, are you surprised he spoke so soon after his return? No, and I'm glad that he spoke so soon. Mm. Uh, it means that for the moment, he's doing okay. Uh, one of the things he said in one of the interviews he did was, you learn to live with the panic. And, and one of the things about post-traumatic stress disorder, one of the things that military combat members will tell you is, you learn to numb out, and it's that numbing out that allows you to get through day-to-day -day torture and uncertainty uh, and, and difficulty, loneliness, and isolation. It's that numbing out that the soldiers, and I've seen 7,000 of them, the soldiers that I've talked to have talked about, and that's how they get through it. And then they come home, and we see these wonderful events, thank goodness. And, and John, I love it. He was a real mensch. I, I love the fact that he's doing so well. I love when we see these uh, uh, videos of the soldiers popping out of the boxes and surprising their children. It's all wonderful. What, unfortunately, we don't see often is what happens weeks and months yeah. and years later. That's a good point. And that's, that's good when point. the emotional turmoil begins. Yeah. It's just the beginning of the process. Dr. Croft, Miguel, you know, thanks so much for being with us. They have a difficult, I think, few days and weeks and months ahead of them, to be sure. And again, the last few days and weeks have been so difficult also, especially with everything else going I was on. I say and, survivor's guilt. I'm sure they're yeah. going to be feeling the impact of that as well.